so uh, good morning once again and uh, we will restart our uh, thinker cat session right now so uh, somebody had uh, messaged me that they could not join the thinker cat classroom that link i have provided in the chat room so you can uh, join that so i have uh, uh, pushed a few um, designs to thinker cat classroom uh, you you may look at them them and uh, try experimenting so let, okay, let me present the screen and uh, take up Tinker card and then we'll look at what we are going to do today. Uh, this is. This one I will copy. Copy this one. Yes. Wait a second. Yeah. Paste this one. And uh, here is the, uh, the link for marking attendance for this session. Uh, so you may mark uh, uh, the attendance on this link, please. Where's Tinker Cat? Okay. Go to class. Yeah. Project. Project this screen. Yeah. Uh, are you able to see the screen? Uh, my design screen here? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. It's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Now uh, you may go to your classroom. Hmm? So here, go your classes. You you may uh, enter uh, in the path, go to your classes, then uh, you will find this. Uh, FTP yeah, IOT under that uh, see activities into the activities you will find this one okay yeah introduction to uh, Arduino so I have uh, posted a couple of them here uh, what what was that okay so and demo series no on the and demo series Okay, so uh, uh, sir, kindly uh, wait. Uh, yesterday I have joined with Google account, but today I'm not getting that option. Pardon? Uh, yesterday I joined with Google account, uh, but today it is showing some sign in with email ID. Uh, yeah, be, uh, below that is there any? It's a you might. Uh, is there any Google? yes sir, sir. Uh, yes sir just just i have got it yeah there is there is an account sign in option there you will get okay is it okay yeah, yes sir i'm joining okay. mm, i hope everybody uh, is uh, joining up by now mm -hmm. so the first thing that we will look at uh, is to read something into the microcontroller so so let, let us review what we have uh, done yesterday so what we did was we uh, logged on to Thinkercad. So then we uh, looked at some of the components. Then I gave you a, an LED blinking uh, sketch to you so that you can uh, experiment it. The design was given, the code was given, and uh, you you guys modified uh, that to uh, blinking LED to to into two LEDs and all. Then I gave you that uh, uh, idea about serial port, how to monitor uh, the serial port, etc. And uh, uh, today uh, we will look at a switch and ADC. These two things you need uh, for your uh, um, uh, for working with the LoRa band and all the other uh, things that we are going to do. Now, so let us see uh, what what about the switches or um, so, uh, so let, let us tinker it first so let us open it up i hope everybody uh, can see my uh, 
finger card sketch here. So it's coming up slowly. Oh, yeah, here. This is what uh, mm, I have uh, uh, given for you. Mm. So uh, let us look at uh, what exactly is this. So for that, okay, let me inspect this also. The whiteboard also I will take up and show you how uh, the photographing is done on whiteboard first and then I will explain. Yeah. So this is uh, just uh, let me take up the whiteboard. Mm. Oh, okay. okay. One second. Let me stop uh, this one. Stop this one. And uh, let me take up a whiteboard. Yeah. Yeah, this one. Okay. I hope you are able to see the whiteboard. Now, let us look at uh, something here. Hmm. So, here I have a 5 volts line. So, my 5 volts, I have a ground here. Hmm. GMB. I have a ground, I have 5 volts. Okay. Now, I have the Arduino board here. Hmm. This is my Arduino board. So, I am connecting uh, a switch to one of these uh, digital I.O. pins. Say here, hmm? say it's a switch. Hmm? So you look at the idea. Hmm? So here is a switch. This is okay. I will. Uh, this is my switch, which I can close or open. Hmm? So. It's just like your uh, uh, light uh, switches. You can just close it or uh, you can open it. It's a push button switch. You say, think of it as a push button switch. So what happens when you when you press the switch, when you press the switch, what happens is that uh, you this particular pin, say let it be say 10, pin number 10 or some, some pin I'm uh, uh, taking on Arduino. So that pin will be uh, connected to ground. That pin will be connected to ground. Uh, now, when this is open, uh, so uh, so what is the status of this particular pin here? Uh, we don't know that. We don't know what is the status of it. <laughs> so we ideally, when this is open, when the switch is open, this pin should get 5 volts. When this is closed, it should get 0 volts or uh, this should be high when you, uh, when you uh, open the switch. When you close the switch, it should be low. But your high or uh, five volts is somewhere here. So if you want to uh, the circuit to work exactly, what people will do is that you will put a resistor here, one resistor here, hmm? so that when the switch is open, when the switch is open, this five volt will be connected to this uh, pin, this particular pin. When the switch is closed, when the switch is closed. The, this particular uh, line will be closed, and or this will be closed here, and you your Arduino pin, this particular pin will be connected to ground. So this is what we are going to do. Now, uh, in our experiment, or you, know, you will write some program, so that we will, we will find out the status of the switch, whether the switch is open or whether the switch is closed. That's what we are going to try out today. So if you, when you press this, so Arduino should give you some message or some, some kind of a message that the switch has been closed. Uh, if it is open, it should say uh, something else. So this is uh, the kind of thing to probably you will uh, find uh, at many places. For example, you have a washing machine at home. Or many of you are. Many of you are having a washing machine at home. So uh, it is automatic thing. Most of the washing machines are automatic. So you fill in your clothes, you open the top. So water will automatically fill. Water will, when the water reaches a particular level, a particular level, so uh, the machine will automatically start. So there will be, there will be some controlling mechanism inside your uh, washing machine. So what exactly that is doing, that there is a float switch. There is an inside uh, that your washing machine, so as the water fills in, at the water, after the fills in uh, a particular level, say here, say some particular water level, it, when it reaches, 
some switch like this will be closed some switch will be closed some switch will be closed here so the microcontroller or the uh, inside your uh, washing machine will detect this closure this closure and then it will switch on the motor so that is how uh, the uh, in real world this works so in iot devices this kind of action is needed for us this kind of action is needed for in many places so our this experiment we are going to implement this okay now let us come back to my uh, original circuitry that i have given so i have given the exactly the same thing so let us look at that thing so let me present that again so okay where is this here here it is uh, so now let us look at what i have uh, done here so you have a 5 volts i i drew the picture you remember that picture i have 5 volts here so this is 5 volts i am taking over to uh, yeah this is the third channel let's go let's go tarp this one ida alle idu matter the tetti to one okay wire is there wire is getting we nammal 5 volt like 5 volt il allo connect cheyirikkene resistor 5 volt aano okay Ah, yeah, yeah, okay. That I, okay. Anyway, anyway, I can uh, just show that again. So, uh, okay. Uh, let me come back to the slide. I will explain it again uh, once again. Don't worry. So, my circuitry and uh, the one thing that I drew, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's flipped off, and I will explain what I, what, what was wrong. Uh, okay. Uh, let me come back to my uh, whiteboard again. Yeah. So this is what I drew. Hmm? So it is also possible. the other way around so let me uh, explain it here so on this one i will uh, okay the let me where is the eraser okay just a second i will erase this i'll draw one more hmm? i'll draw one more out you know here so and i'll tell you uh, what is wrong here hmm? so on the diagram that uh, you have what i have drawn uh, Yeah, ah okay is slightly different hmm? so on the diagram so don't get confused on this is my arduino here and uh, this is that pin hmm? this is 5 volts this is your ground hmm? this is your ground hmm? and what i have done is slightly different like uh, see apps uh, oops um Okay. One second. Eraser. What happened? Eraser one minute. I'm not taking up the eraser. No, oh, what are you doing? Okay. Okay. Wait. So I am having some difficulty in drawing. So. Hmm. what i have done is this ulta hmm. the diagram that i have given what i have done is the other way around my switch is here yeah this is my switch my switch is here hmm. so you see the difference between these two this is my arduino this is my arduino this is a resistor and this is my switch so this kind of thing on the left one this is called a pull up pull up configuration this is called a pull down configuration pull uh, down so there is not nothing different the difference is in the sense that when you close the switch 5 volts will come when you open the switch zero will come so ground will come this is a, a, the other way around there is not different there is much difference except that there's a shift of logic levels so unfortunately uh, uh, i drew the diagram the right side diagram on that uh, um, finger card and i explained the left one so don't get confused so what we are going to do, do is, is the right side thing so when you close the switch this 5 volt will come to this particular pin uh, when you open the switch ground will come so we we can sense uh, it anyway you I, actually 
once i have uh, finished it you you can change it to the other way I, i'll close this now we'll come back to my presentation here so sorry for that uh, uh, so here is the diagram so let us uh, look at it first so okay let us look at see here i have 5 volts i'm taking 5 volt from here i'm taking it to the breadboard here so let us open up the breadboard big slightly bigger up so th this this is your this is your 5 volt line here my 5 volt line is here and uh, my ground line ground line i have uh, i have taken ground from say this part see here is a ground line there is a ground on my board i have taken both so i have taken my 5 volt here and the lower line and uh, ground to the upper line here see these are the two lines two lines here now uh now uh, i have this switch here so let us look at the switch so you can press this switch see here so while simulation while simulating you can press this switch see one line goes to this particular thing and uh, from the other point it comes out see this this particular thing comes out okay and see i think i will change the color of this to red so that uh, you have a better uh, clarity hmm? okay so this is this, this, this red is your 5 volt it comes to one uh, point here on the uh, one leg of your switch on the other leg of the your switch this uh, green line is coming or uh, this uh, blue line is coming and it comes to Mm, is to a resistor here mm, and the, the, from that point itself i, I am come connecting to uh, the to the arduino this is the arduino point arduino so i will show the other diagram again so that you are not confused again uh, so let me switch to whiteboard again so you look at the right side so here is a ground from the ground i have a resistor to this a uh, particular line i think i have connected two or three there to the line of pin number two or three okay which i have to check up again and here i have a switch see from this point of the switch that is one point at one point of the switch is connected to arduino resist and as well as resistor so let us uh, switch back to the other one hmm. switch back to the other diagram again hmm. so this is my connection like this so you you can also examine that see the one that i have shared uh, you can uh, you can examine uh, the connection here say 5 volt goes from here to this line uh, ground goes from this line to this this here and uh, here is a switch oops oops uh, i should delete it yeah oh okay so control is a uh, yeah that is the correct way. so from this point uh, see other point of the switch i am coming to the resistor this joint is connected to which pin let us see which pin yeah pin 2 so this is a diagram this is the diagram what we are going to do now uh, our aim is to uh, detect whether this switch is pressed in a real way uh, so we can think of that whether the water has filled the uh, your washing machine sufficient amount of water has been filled in the washing machine if that thing is there you should do something else okay for that now i hope the diagram is correct uh, clear for you let us let us look at the code code is very simple the code is very simple uh, once i um, explain the code you can try to execute you can try to execute uh, oh somebody is saying that okay Sorry. okay no in messages no yes okay mm, now uh, let us look at the uh, code the code has two sections a setup section and a loop section which i explained yesterday the setup section i will, I will uh, recall it setup section is executed when you have Uh, when your uh, microcontroller or the arduino board switches on when the, it is initially powered on this will be again be this will be uh, this will be executed 
So there are just two lines here, just two lines. We are using setting pin mode two as input. So this particular pin, see that uh, switch is connected to uh, pin number two. And the diagram I drew earlier on whiteboard, I think I connected to 10. Don't, uh, so the change is also here. Hmm. Now, uh, this point I am uh, declaring this particular pin 2 as uh, input pin. It means that the controller is no, all, will always be reading from this, not writing. So earlier when we, are, we had connected an LED, uh, we had uh, uh, set the pin to output mode. Now here, we are, we are setting the, the pin mode to uh, input. Then uh, we are beginning that serial monitor. So I had explained the serial monitor. So if you want to read something from the controller, so whether we, are, we, we need to read it to the computer. So because uh, this particular Arduino does not have a Wi-Fi connectivity, so we or it doesn't have a monitor. So if you want to examine what is happening inside, you should uh, uh, have. Uh, you should look at the is via the serial port. You have to look at inside the controller via the serial port. So we are going to find out whether you somebody has pressed the switch or whether the water level has filled to a sufficient level. Then, uh, so that is why we are beginning the serial port with a 9600 as board rate. Okay, fine. Now let us come to come to the uh, loop statement. This will be run infinitely. This is an infinite, lo infinite loop. So the first line, it will say that serial print read switch. This will, it, will, it will read the switch for, uh, say, it will read the, uh, it will print this string on the serial monitor. It is, it is going to print the serial monitor on the real, serial monitor. And here, and next, we, we are going to print whatever is read from the pin number two. Now, you, if you carefully examine, there are two parts here. See, there is one part which I am marking. This is one part which I am marking here. So it is it is reading digital read two digital read. So earlier for uh, uh, blinking the LED, we had uh, put up digital uh, right. Here we are using digital read digital read. Uh, so this statement reads the content or the status of this particular switch. If it is closed uh, it, or it is op open, so it will be on either one or zero will be, or two or false you will get. Now you are printing that. Hmm? You are printing that particular thing. What is uh, on the serial print ln line? So you it will read the switch. It will uh, print the current status of the switch, and it will delay for we will wait for some hundred milliseconds or so. Then we, it will be reading again. So this is the idea of reading the switch. I hope uh, uh, the idea is clear. So let us go back to the simulation part. Let us go back to the simulation part. So I'm going to start simulation. Hmm? Uh, oops, what happened? So read some, I have some errors. Pin mode. Uh, hmm? Let me see, I think I, I tried something else here and what is wrong? Is it you? Is it you? You just tinker it. I think I have, I have made some error here while doing that. It is saying an error here on pin mode. Please uh, wait, I will fix it. Mm. Yeah, uh, so we will we'll examine it on another machine. Hmm? No, no. Has anybody, uh, uh, is anybody able to um, tinker this? Let me stop the simulation. I think. Uh, yes, sir. It is working sir, here. It's, it's working, working here you. at our end. Uh, at your end, it is working. Yes, so sir. I, yes, I, sir. I made a okay, so, uh, Ah, now I think, uh, okay, fine, fine, fine. It is uh, is working for me also. So let me open the serial port. If you open the serial port, I don't know what was my mistake here. Uh, probably, eh? 
So you can press this button here. You, you mouse over button. See, if you keep on pressing, if you keep pressing on this button, you move the mouse over the button and uh, you press, you will get a one there. Hope you, uh, and everybody is getting that simulation. You simulate. Yes, sir. Button. Move the mouse over to your this push button switch. Press on it. That's yes, it. sir. It's toggling to one. It is toggling to one. You can make it a bigger one. So, so that it is toggling to one. Hmm? So this is exactly what I want. It's working, sir. Ah, it is working. See, so, see, this is how you read switch. You you read an input from somewhere. So this is this has a lot of practical applications. See. You can uh, you can build uh, your washing machine with this. See, you can detect. You can put two switches. See, one for low level indication. See, if water is missing, you can open uh, the tap. You can open the tap. So, if the second switch is closed, see, maybe your washing machine will have the, this kind of a circuitry. There is a there is some mechanism which can detect uh, whether. Uh, water is below some particular level. If water is below a level, you should switch on the tap. Then, uh, as the water flow go, goes in, uh, as the flows in, and uh, uh, after a level, after reaching a level, some other switch will close. So the microcontroller will switch off the tap. Now, uh, say it will switch on. Uh, maybe you, uh, the controller can switch on the motor. It can wait for some, uh, say, 30 minutes or so. Then it can switch off. So all those things you can. Uh, build using these three, these uh, logic. So I think we have we have enough uh, um, tools with us to build some basic uh, mechanisms sir, that we. Sir, can, I query, sir? can I interrupt, sir? Yes. Any any question? Sir, uh, microcontroller can uh, uh, switch on the on of the motor uh, without any um, uh, water level sensor or only with switch. No, no, it, it means can, we it need can switch on the motor switch on switch off. The it doesn't need anything else, anything, any other controller. Nothing. It, it is just eh? uh, see you can you can you can think of in terms of LED and switch. Let's let let I, I will uh, I will restate the problem. I will restate the problem. So you have an LED here. You have somewhere an LED. Uh, see, you can replace that LED with a motor. You can replace that LED with a motor. So you, we learned yesterday how to switch on an LED and switch off. You remember it yesterday. So you can switch on and switch off the motor at any time. Now you have this switch. If you read the switch and you are get you, you can toggle this value, you know, zero to one. So when it reaches one, when, if it, it has reached one at some point, you can switch on. You can wait for 30 seconds. Then uh, eh, 30 minutes. Then you can switch off. So, sir, I will add one thing. Yeah. Sir, here my question is that here we are do here we are manually pressing the switch on and off yeah. so that the LED is going on and off. I am yeah. talking about automatic. automatic uh, yeah, automatic on. thing will be this. You need an automatic switch, automatic switch which will sense the water, uh, the content of water. water. Level, yes, sir. So the that content of water, it has to sense. Is a water level indicator, na, sir. Yeah, yeah, water level. Uh, yeah, when say the, those water level indicators are nothing but simply nothing but some switches. When it reaches, uh, uh, when water reaches a particular level, it will uh, automatically it will on. automatically this switch will be switched on. Huh? Fine. Sir, we are doing a demo here. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, I'm I'm giving a demo of that. Now. Ah. Uh, uh, okay. So instead of this switch. It was the switch. Now you can replace it with a, a say some, some something like a PIR switch. There is a PIR sensor. Person, uh, see if you if a person comes near some your near your door, near near your door, uh, there are sensors uh, uh, which can detect that. So those things maybe um, see it's here on uh, your tool chest here. You see. If you look here uh, on the components, components you will see many different kinds of senses here. So, which can uh, say where is this? If you go down somewhere, you have that PAR sensor here. Yeah. You see, if somebody is approaching you, your house, you can uh, build something. No, it's not there. It's there somewhere. 
Mm. So it has got a lot of. Uh, oh, yeah, PAR. Okay, I, P, the PAR is here. PAR sensor. Okay. No. Oh, yeah. The sensor, I had seen the sensor yesterday. Yeah, it's here. And the PAR sensor is here. You can put a PAR sensor, you can wire it up. So there are one line goes to ground, one line goes to uh, the five volts, and the midpoint goes to your uh, this one. And you can actually. Can you build that? So uh, we will build it. We'll, uh, my, my friend will build it for you. And, uh, We'll share that so that I so how to simulate a person. If somebody approaches this, uh, you you when somebody approaches you, uh, you can uh, set an alarm or something. See, my colleague will be building, and while uh, I think it is a two minute job only for him. So we will uh, continue with the class. So uh, now uh, your job for today, your exercise for today is to combine the early LED thing and. Uh, you are uh, a little LED thing and this switch thing. So, uh, what what I, I you what you have to do as an exercise is this. So, uh, let me pull out all components here. So, you have to put one resistor here. Say you have to put one LED here, one LED, one resistor. That wiring I am not doing. So, you should wire it up properly. Then, when the switch is pressed, if that input value equal to equal to one, digital value is equal to one, you should switch on the LED. That is your exercise. I will, I will, not, I will not do it, but uh, you should try it out. If you are smart enough, you are, you are, anyway, you are all computer science teacher, uh, that logic should be uh, very easily understood by you. So my, my requirement is this, when I press this, this LED should do it. We should fire up. So you can uh, you can uh, use it to what? You can uh, use one of the pins here. See, say pin number ten or somewhere. You can wire the LED, and uh, you can press the switch. So that will uh, solve the LED switch problem. So you have a digital input and a digital output. So we have learned what we have learned so far is that. You can have digital inputs and digital outputs. Uh, I hope uh, uh, the idea is clear to you. Uh, any any questions? So I'll, otherwise, I will move over to the next one. I think uh, uh, no questions. People are uh, at least some people are listening. No, let me check how many are there. Uh, Twenty six yes. are there. yeah. Twenty six people are there. Five yes, sir, I... Yeah, you you could do that. No. Yes, sir. I, I have done the same. Which one? The LED switch? The, the one you have said that. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, you have done. Fine. Very good. Yes, sir. Ah. 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 Okay, then uh, uh, I, I, my, my colleague will share one screen here. I will uh, give you an, uh, a newer uh, perspective regarding this. Okay, please share. Wait a second. Can you share it on your phone? One minute. Yeah. Ah. What's your target on this? No, it's not. 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 It's Okay, you can go to the middle button. Middle button scroll. Yeah, fine. Okay, this is the one I was mentioning. Wait, wait a second. So, here we have quickly wired up a PAR sensor. A PAR sensor has been wired here. Yeah, instead of switch, and so instead of switch, uh, we have connected to uh, one, of, one of the, uh, say you can actually remove that switch and uh, that wires. Can you quickly? Yeah? Uh, okay, we, we, have, we have added 
the PAR sensor to this circuitry, this Arduino. You see the you see the wiring. One there are three lines to PAR. One goes to ground. One goes to uh, your uh, say five volts, and uh, the middle middle button comes to pin number three. Okay. Uh, two pin number pin number two. Okay. So uh, now uh, so now uh, let us uh, simulate it. See somebody. Ah, uh, if somebody is moving towards someone, that uh, that yellow I mean, uh, uh, blue dot is the person approaching this one. Mm, so okay, so the person is approaching the front of this. So that is the area where where, where which now you see the switch has been closed. Mm, it is it is not the switch that uh, uh, that is on the breadboard. I have not it. So that it is the PAR sensor that is. So, so we are we have kept that also there. We have, we have just kept it. There is nothing uh, that that switch on the breadboard is not operational. We are using the PAR sensor only. We have just quickly um, wired it up for uh, for uh, uh, switch. You just remove the switch. Hmm? Yeah, other level. Ah, okay, switch is gone. Uh, stop simulation. Just one second. We will we will clean up the circuit so that uh, uh, people have a, a better idea. Hmm? So we are, we will clean up that switch and remove it. I'll click here, I'll then click here, delicate jump. Will I click card? Yeah, then we'll escape. I forgot. Let's get it. You know, I am going to removing that. Yeah, so that uh, everybody has a proper idea about what is happening. That one, uh, that resistor and uh, huh? oh, okay, okay. Ah, yeah, yeah, fine. Uh, now, uh, this is uh, this is exactly. Uh, the same circuit. We have that pull-up thing. We have the pull-up thing. We have uh, uh, okay. He is uh, uh, beautifying it. One second. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Now I think uh, that thing, entire thing, is correct. The system does require like one more point. One more point. I would have five two. That is not needed. Pull up and pull up in a thunder. Mute to pull up in the wire. Yeah. Yes. New hmm. simulated. Hmm. How do I So we are sim okay. you have to make it a little bit stop simulation and make it a bit. Yeah. You see. You see, uh, we have just wired the uh, your uh, mm, uh, PAR sensor here, and the person is that blue uh, blue dot. When the person approaches the area, you are getting a one. You are getting a one. You are just reading that. And, uh, uh, yeah, that area, blue area, that area uh, is the sensing area. This is how uh, a, a PAR sensor is. Uh, uh, this is how you somebody. Senses somebody is approaching you also, so microcontroller will automatically detect. See, somebody has now you can it can you can sense an alarm, you can send a light or whatever you want to do. So I hope now the idea is clear for you. With in, rather than switch, the PAR sensor gives you a better uh, idea about how you read input from outside. Okay, uh, okay, you can show. Okay, so that was a presentation from my colleague Shubu, uh, who who is just sitting opposite to me. And I think uh, uh, he is also helping me with all uh, the uh, other uh, coding and uh, okay, you can stop the simulation and, uh, and stop. I hope uh, uh, everybody understood that. Okay, shall I move? So th this uh, PAR we will also also we will put into the uh, classroom later. Okay. Later I know uh, he will share it to me. I will put it back to uh, your your Tinker Tinker Card classroom so that you can. Uh, 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 tinker with it. Okay. Yeah. So our tools are ready. We have. Uh, we you can switch off. Uh, uh, I mean, we can switch on an LED or switch off it. Hmm? You can switch on. A, uh, we, we can read the status of a switch. Uh, so these are these two are digital I/O. See, uh, switch is either closed or open. Similarly, LED is either on or off. Hmm? On or off. See, these are digital I/Os. Now, in order to complete this section, I need one more thing. That is analog read. Analog read. Say, for example, 
suppose you have a temperature um, you have you you need to sense temperature or something like that uh, see the quantity or temperature is an analog quantity it means that it can vary within certain ranges say between uh, say 10 uh, degrees to maybe some of you are from north india then uh, there the temperature is like uh, minus 3 in the winter uh, to 46 uh, scorching heat in summer maybe in delhi and all you will get some 46 47 degree so the temperature is a quantity which varies between uh, minus 3 to uh, say 46 degree so we don't know what quantity it, it, it will be that so it's a, it's an analog quantity at any time it can change in the morning it will be low say maybe in the uh, around noon it will be high then again it, evening it will go so it's a ever changing quantity it's an analog quantity we should read such quantities and get uh, get that value uh, inside the microcontroller to uh, complete this uh, operation so i think uh, we, if you if you are able to read such a quantity like analog quantity uh, you are you are uh, done with your embedded systems you you can you can uh, build any kind of uh, circuitry any kind of designs uh, which read some value it prints out or it uh, operates uh, some motor some mechanism some lift or uh, many many uh, real world things you can uh, build using these uh, four, three things say you need digital io uh, analog analog io digital and digital io we are going to look at analog input now so analog input right now so let us uh, move ahead to the next uh, uh, one next uh, uh, Listen. So let me go back here. Mingle. Ah, Ellie, this is what I'm talking about. The temperature sensor. Temperature sensor. What I'm talking about. What can I do? Wait a second. Go to my class here. My class. TPIOT. Yes, activities. So next activity is uh, ADC here. You see. an adc so i am going to tinker this i am going to tinker this yes let us take it yeah now look at this circuit we look at this circuitry what i have here uh, is uh, a potentiometer so probably you might have seen a potentiometer so i uh, see most of you have seen your radios or tv sets are where you can turn a turn a knob uh, and vary the volume i hope you you might be remembering that you have one here yeah i think the other box you have yeah yes i will show uh, the potentiometer to the, uh, uh, directly to you Uh, see wait a second let me oh, so am i presenting no no huh? you present it no yes i am not presenting it right now okay yes sir not so, sharing i'm not sharing I, i i thought i was sharing so you might have uh, seen this guy somewhere hmm? yes see, sir where sir and probably if you are from electronics lab electronics yes, background sir. you might have seen this otherwise Uh, those others they might have seen uh, it uh, uh, on your um, tvs radios etc you will put a nice knob here you can turn around this one this guy you can turn around so the volume will increase and uh, increase increase and until it reaches a maximum if you reduce it it will reach to the other one other line so and now uh, let us look at this what is happening here so this is an important uh, tool in which you with which you will teach your students how analog things works hmm? suppose hmm? see between the end points here see you see i hope uh, you are able to see this hmm? so on my diagram uh, on my yes, uh, see there are there are three pins here hmm? an end pin on on end uh, there are three pins uh, the middle pin and two edge pins between these edge pins between these edge pins there is a constant resistance there is a constant resistance and the as you turn so if you take any two 
so if you take any two or the, the with, see you take the one one side of of this potentiometer one leg of this potentiometer and the, take the middle one forget about the other one just two just two of them the, uh, it, one of them should be the middle one if you turn this if you turn this uh, the resistance between these two will change vary the resistance between these two will slowly vary it will vary so you are going to you are going to detect what what position this potentiometer is at what position this potentiometer is in this dial so you are turning the radio dial so at one at some point it will reach the maximum at some point it will reach the minimum so you can detect you you will be able to detect at what point at what point you you are uh, potentiometer is so anyway this is slowly 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 moving so it is an analog quantity the the resistance here is an analog quantity and you will be you will be uh, measuring that one so it is slightly complicated don't worry if you are uh, from a, a non a very non electronics or computer science background don't worry so i will try to explain and even if you don't understand it fully don't worry i see you will understand it when uh, when i and i show you a temperature sensor now look at this is a very simple thing is a very simple circuitry simple circuit is very simple i have an arduino here you see how the you you uh, are you able to see this are you able to see my screen yes sir yeah so uh, my connection is like this i have taken 5 volts from here see it goes to this line see here my ground is taken from here it comes to this line so i showed you the potentiometer three leg the end the the end the end pins see if you look at uh, this potentiometer diagram here potentiometer is on the, uh, in the diagram here you will see three pins this is terminal one this this is a wiper and this is a terminal two there are two edge pins edge pins are the end pins at the ends are called terminals and here is a wiper so if you if you see here if you see here you you by turning that knob you are turning this wiper here so at some point it is resting so the diagram now let us come back to the diagram you have uh, you have this 5 volts going to one terminal uh, ground going to the other terminal and the midpoint midpoint is a wiper this we are connecting to one of the analog pins of the arduino no no on the other side so here the, where all your digital pins were on this side whereas your analog pins are on the other side of the board see here here uh, we are connecting to a0 now our a, our purpose is to read the position of this wiper where this wiper is so it it can be between any point 0 to say maximum value so so that we have to find out find out at which point the wiper is now comes the complication Now let us let me come to the let let me come to the uh, code here. The code is simple, uh, but uh, uh, there is there is some small catch. So there is some small catch. The uh, Arduino has. analog to digital converters here see there are six analog to digital converters see as all of you know our computers work for digital world. say everything is on everything is digital and digital electronics digital world so uh, you you need it's inside your computer you need to uh, have the thing as digital values so what we have done is that uh, see the this entire wiper dial see there are infinite values infinite values from uh, from uh, one edge uh, one edge or one end to the other end there are infinite values we will divide them into 1024 distinct and distinct values that is you 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 divide your digital positions so you can think of like this your dial has this dial has 1024 distinct positions see you as you turn position 1 2 3 up to 1024 will be there 
there will be thousand, there will be thousand twenty four distinct positions. So you can read at which position this this particular uh, dial is. That is because see th why thousand twenty four. You are uh, analog to digital converter ADC. Your analog to digital converter is a ten bit ADC. If you had a, if you had a, a, a eleven bit ADC, you you might have had. Uh, thou, uh, thou, uh, two zero nine six positions, uh, or double that two zero four eight positions. So, if the number of bits, number of ADC bits inside the controller, if it is higher, you will get better position. You will get more position on the dial. So, let me uh, simulate it and show you what exactly uh, this means. If you, even if you don't understand, don't worry. Uh, so, we will um, look at some more things. So here the code is like this. Your uh, your serial there's a serial begin so that you can print in serial port. Uh, the sensor value. So I have declared an integer for the first time. There's a, a variable for the first time. Integer sensor value. Uh, sensor value is equal to analog read. So I have just read the value and kept it in the sensor value. So and the serial print ln sensor value. So I will delay for say wait for some days so that you can read it. So let me simulate it. I'm simulating it. Yeah, it has started simulation. So where is the serial port? Serial port. Uh, some some at what some position it is sitting. So let me turn around this. See, I can I can turn the wiper to the other side. Say here. So now uh, the wiper is at zeroth position, the minimum position. So as I slowly increase, so it it goes to forty second. See, sixty first position. Hmm? So you can have you can if you are smart enough you can go to two. So no, I'm not. Uh, uh, no, see, you you can slowly vary. You can slowly vary from here. What happened? Amarth Angelo is moving. See, it is, you can move it up to the maximum thousand twenty four, thousand twenty three because it starts from zero. It starts from zero to thousand twenty three. There are thousand twenty four positions. You can re you can detect the the distinct positions distinct positions of this. So this is the analog read. Analog read. Uh, you can try that. See, all, uh, has anybody simulated this? Yes, sir. The one you have provided, I have simulated. You have simulated. You uh, did you understand what it uh, what exactly it is? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. yeah, because we are, we are we are uh, reading some value. The analog values are there are infinite number of values between uh, zero and thousand twenty four. Instead, yes, uh, we have we have converted or we we have uh, due, due to the hardware limitation, we are uh, we are, we are uh, limiting or we are uh, dividing the entire dial into thousand twenty four positions, and we, we will read uh, at which position the dial is. So if it is an Somewhere here uh, in the middle, it will be somewhere between the 500 range. So, using uh, this value that has been read, you can uh, you can say switch on your heater. Say, for example, uh, if you uh, you might have seen uh, the fan speed, etc. You you will be switching on fans. You're you're setting your fan speed. You remember that you, some of the automatic fans are coming now. You can just uh, um, uh, set some positions. See, you turn a dial, your fan speed will move. Depending on how my, where the dial is set, this fan speed you can control. That kind of actions you can uh, make using the uh, this type of analog green. Uh, do you have a temperature thing? Out of the number. Okay. Ah, fine, fine. Okay. Uh, now. Your exercise will be like this. You can you have to write code. You, so those who are uh, seriously pursuing this, you do one experiment like this. So I put an LED here. Put an LED here. And if this dial, this sensor value is above say 500, switch on the LED. If it is below uh, say 500, you switch on. So you can turn while simulation. While simulating, you can turn this uh, around. You can turn this around, and uh, the your uh, uh, LED should switch on or off. So there is a combination of 
uh, the uh, experiment that we had done earlier you can you can combine those you put a you wire an led here uh, you then sim while simulation you turn around this and if it reaches above the sensor values above someone some code you uh, switch on switch on the led sir so, there add led you can do i am not going to uh, you you can add it here on the breadboard say okay. you wire it to any one of the pin digital pins not the analog pins okay sir fine and then you modify the code that is that is my my direction for you you modify the code and uh, complete that so the experiment is like that you so i have given you all the components all the necessary tools you have to combine it this is how you should ask your students also you should teach them how to read a potentiometer you should teach them how to set up an led a switch then ask them to combine everything and build some system that i am not going to do anyway because we have really really very limited time okay now okay. Uh, uh, one second let me look at uh, some other example that we have here please please wait a second and let me uh, go back to my tinker card here sir uh, excuse yeah. me sir yeah sir here in this potentiometer circuit a0 yeah. is connected to middle pin or yeah that uh, middle pin oh uh, yeah i Yo, yo, yo! It's it's middle. Yeah, I I think I made a mistake here. So middle pin, middle pin. Uh, yeah, the mistake was when I not only see this is like this. Okay, sir. Can you see this? Uh, yeah, yes, because sir. I was I was okay. dragging around that. Okay. The middle pin should go to your A zero. See here. Now it is correct because it it was while I was simulating it was correct. I think I dragged it to the side. Okay, sir. Am I right? Is it okay? you yes, understood okay. what was my mistake you see you correctly pointed out see the middle pin is where uh, the position comes up the wiper is actually indicating the middle the, the status of the middle pin and this goes to a0 okay uh, now let me go back to tinker card again uh, yes where is this one uh, we have old circuits here ldr so i think uh, uh, we have lot i have uh, a lot of other uh, uh, circuits here i will put it into the in the classroom today today evening hmm? by before uh, once the class is over we had in the in the actually this arduino class itself is a one week course the one that i am teaching right now is a one week course that i offer to students here students and you will realize that the, that kind of uh, labs we take here so it contains all the lot of things that we use you see we we uh, we design we it is how to design uh, lcds how to um, control uh, motors etc see there are lot of experiments here so i will take one uh, experiment and put it to your cl uh, classroom right now there is a temperature sensor let me see whether it works right now uh, this one no yeah uh, i will add one more thing to your classroom hmm. add class activity to the introduction to arduino so okay i hope that has come to your class you check your class whether uh, one more uh, activity has come up yeah oh, yeah it is here see you will see something called lm35 here lm35 here uh, i will explain what exactly it is say it has been shared to the class you can take it from the class you can also open up Hmm. so it's a temperature sensor so how you sense a temperature and uh, print something on the serial port so it is coming up hmm. so exactly similar the circuit is exactly similar lm35 is a three pin temperature sensor it's a three pin sensor it is it is commonly available in the market for 50 rupees or so Fifty rupees, I think even less than that. This particular uh, sensor is available in electronic shops. Hmm. So there are three pins. There are three pins, and uh, uh, one pin you should connect to ground. Other pin you should connect to uh, five volts, and the middle pin will give you some value corresponding to the current room temperature. Current room temperature, whatever is the current room temperature, temperature, it it will give you the value corresponding. to that so that is a diagram so very simple and in in the code side i think i have the code here let me look up 
the code here. The code is like that. Um, you see, I have declared an integer here, so integer value. Then I have serial port I have begun. And here in this line, loop line, first line, I am reading the analog A0. So inside the, I am reading the value I am getting from the LM35. See, it should be some analog value corresponding to some temperature. Some value will be there. Some some voltage it will give. This is essentially this is a uh, this gives you some voltage, some voltage uh, uh, corresponding to your uh, temperature. So you can read read the analog value here. Hmm. Now uh, I will apply one formula. Hmm. So the whatever voltage I am reading from the sensor which I will convert it into centigrade. So that there is a formula which I have done. So I think I am uh, uh, dividing it by 1024 and multiplying it uh, by 1000. This will convert it into millivolts. And then I think I will convert this into Celsius during this formula. See, forget about this one. This, this is the, uh, don't, don't. Ah, that's a conversion factor. It gives you, See, this particular temperature sensor gives you temperature in terms of voltage. You have to convert the voltage uh, on the middle pane to some uh, Celsius value or centigrade value by applying this formula. This formula will be found in the data book or data sheet of this one. So you forget about it. that is just a conversion. Whatever you are getting, you are converting into, into uh, temperature. And so we will print temperature, degree centigrade, print ln, delay for something. So this code line should be very simple. So we are uh, we are uh, nicely printing it on the serial port. Okay, let let us simulate it. Mm, yeah. Now uh, where is the serial monitor? Yeah, it is giving something seventy degree. I think you can vary it. See if you click on the temperature the sensor, you can heat it up. You can heat it up. You can cool it. See. You can heat it, heat up, you can cool down. You while simulation, while simulating, you click on the temperature sensor, you click on the temperature sensor, and it will uh, it, it will vary the temperature. So between see maximum minimum is my nine degree. My, okay, this is the, the other end. Other end is 170 degree. So you, you can vary that. This is a typical example of a practical application. Now uh, uh maybe i think where is time now this comes, huh? 10 34 i think i will i have a bad feel i see uh, i request all of you to uh fill out uh the the attendance sheet for second session i think only 16 people have filled only 16 responses i think that means only 16 people are there so using this response sheet I, this sheet i am going to uh put you into batches of two or three for the afternoon session. I think only those who are really attending, they will, they need to join that one. Anyway, if somebody, they, the experiments uh, will be hands on uh, on our LoRaWAN setup. So those who have not filled out, filled up the attendance sheet, please fill up. I will, I'll put this into that uh, WhatsApp group also. I'm going to put this into WhatsApp group also. Uh, okay, just copy it. Uh, just copy this and uh, let me put it here again. Yeah. If you have filled it once, okay, don't worry. So I need that attendance thing here. Attendance sheet for Atal FP. Atal. Okay. See, I am putting that into the WhatsApp group also. Wait a second. Mm. Please fill out the attendance. Please fill out that. Hello, sir. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, sir. LM35 file just you have shown. Uh, uh, has it been shared in your uh, folder so that we can? Get uh, this file? Is, no, uh, you, you can have it. No, you are in uh, your uh, uh, activities. It is showing up for me, class activities. You see the activities in the class. See, can, can you see this one? Introduction to Arduino. Yes, uh, here, yes. I think I have uh, LM35 to the, to the right. 
last thing okay sir actually uh, maybe um, you should my, uh, you should uh, my lower, network my, is a little bit you know, if you are not getting my... so if you are not getting what i will tell you what what you should do um, you should go to the finger card here See, on the top left you click on this finger card yes, go sir. to your classes again eh? okay okay sir okay then you you will appear then it yes, will sir. appear uh, and uh, maybe i think i had another experiment in which i had uh, the lcd kind of thing i i say I, i i think i will share this also to the class uh, you can uh, experiment with the lcd also i am not explaining it but uh, on a, at a bigger course a longer course i might have explained how to interface lcd how to interface all other uh, main uh, analog uh, things etc i have put one more thing you can go there and uh, uh, experiment in your classroom mm-hmm. so i have so i will i will put some more later on some more exercises uh, which you can uh, actually use in your classroom or in your uh, teaching okay uh, so in the next so afternoon uh, the session will be uh, we will start at 2 o'clock initially uh, the uh, your uh, resource person will teach you about the um what exactly lora van is then the, uh, the remaining things will be hands on so that we will be will be helping you out from here but you will be accessing our computers remotely via your browser and uh, then doing that so we what we are doing planning to do is we will we'll put you into 333 batches as you we do i i will put the uh, i will publish the batch list uh, on the whatsapp group uh, by 2 o'clock so you three of them you you will be uh, be uh, doing it jointly on on one machine the other next three will be on another machine so we have 10 machines right now so at uh, all together 30 people can uh, do simultaneously so then there is one issue one one communication issue that is going to happen so among the batches among the see you the in a batch there will be three people so you have to communicate between yourself you have to communicate whether uh, x is doing whether y is uh, watching while x is doing or you should time share your, between yourself for that i will i will put something else i will i will create batchwise whatsapp so that you can you can talk to us batchwise so i, I will create batchwise whatsapp group and i'll share to you later so you can you can jo- join you can create i have created batchwise whatsapp group for you so your all batch members myself and uh, dr shibu will be in that batch so you can talk directly to us directly to your uh, mentors here so so that you will have individual attention so maybe individual communications so it is slightly complicated let's see let us uh, see whether uh, see we can effectively run labs uh, online with the people sitting across the uh, across mm-hmm. india anyway let's see let's try out that so i will uh, so somebody has message something what we need to have a system requirement okay and see you you should sit in front of uh, a, a system with a browser hmm? so you will be everything everything will be your every simulation that you are going to do will be from a browser hmm? and uh, mm, you it is better you uh, that you have a phone as well as a, a computer in front of you and uh, there is one more thing that i just want to remind you uh, while uh, um, before going to that thing uh, just one second please uh, please wait for a uh, moment I'll... Uh, okay stop Okay. So before winding up, uh, I just want to show you one more thing. Second, uh, I'm uh, from the beginning, but couldn't find the attendance. Uh, second session, somebody had messaged. Okay, attendance. I think uh, uh, today second session somebody was asking that Google Sheet is here. Uh, attendance. Okay. So I, I, at the end of the session, I will take it down. because otherwise eh, it is not there eh? really 
Oh, okay, fine. Ah. Ah, otherwise, we can show them. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Now, uh, I just want to remind you one more thing. While doing the other experiments on LoRaWAN, we will again be using uh, Arduino IDE. That Arduino programming language and Arduino IDE you will be using. Uh, but uh, you, you are uh, bored that you are, you have shown you this board here. There's a board. So you just show me that board. Yeah. This is that uh, Arduino board that you are using, I'm using. So we will be using the same programming language, same Arduino programming language for uh, LoRaWAN, but we will be using a different board, LoRaWAN specific board. See that board will have will have <coughs> RF integrated. There will be some wireless connectivity, uh, which it can which can communicate maybe over uh, uh, across ten kilometers. See, it's a it's a long distance uh, thing you will be showing. See some of the um, uh, parameters from a remote location you will be monitoring. Mm -hmm. So uh, you will be using. Uh, we will not be. We are not going to use Arduino, but a uh, Arduino-like board with the LoRaWAN capability will be used. So the coding and the other aspect will be exactly similar. Is it all done? Mm -hmm. ah. Now, uh, and before concluding, before concluding this talk, uh, uh, since uh, we were on Tinkercad, we were simulating everything. So if you are buying Arduino for your lab, you see, you will not be using Tinkercad. Instead, uh, uh, yeah. In short, you will be you will be installing uh, a software from Arduino website. You should go to the Arduino.cc website, and you you will be able to uh, download this kind of a software where you can uh, you see. Here is the. I hope uh, uh, you are able to see the screen. So I will show the Blink program that you you will just on a real hardware. Uh, see when on a real hardware there are a lot of this this particular IDE from Arduino. There are a lot of Arduino boards. So we will uh, we are we are trying to uh, program a Uno board. Uno is there, and uh, you are connecting a serial port. So our uh, our uh, real board is connected to my computer via a serial port. Okay, forget about it. You just uh, blink upload the the blink. I don't know where that Preferences. Okay. Uh, this is our this is our uh, LED program that uh, blinking program that we did. So we will upload this. So just uh, we are going to upload this. You, you look at that IDE. This is the real real thing, not that simulation thing. And we are going to upload this too. Uh, you can just upload. So there is an upload button. Uh, so you will see that up done uploading in the bottom. Something has uh, that done uploading. And if you can see uh, my board here. Uh, you can just show. Just, yeah. huh? uh, can you see that blue LED blinking? Blue LED is blinking on uh, on my video. Uh, you look at my personal video. The blue LED is blinking. Now he will change. He will change the delay. So you you can change the delay. You can change the. Uh, yeah. huh? Okay. There's a. There, he is uploading using the right arrow. Okay. Uh, now he has up, re-uploaded it. So the, that blink is that blink frequency has gone. I can't always have one. You can see that there. You see whether you are able to see this. On Sir, my video. Are, on, yes. on my video, can you see the blue LED blinking? So we can just see that uh, screen of uh, code. Ah uh, yeah, yeah. Code, you just uh, uh, close this one. This one? Uh, yeah, share, sharing, sharing. Sharing the code. Sharing scope, scope is sharing. Uh, now can you see the one that I have uh, programmed? Yes, sir. Yes, so, I yes, think sir. Uh, that blue is blinking, but I don't know whether you are able to see that. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. I can see. Eh? Yes, sir. The blue is blinking there. See. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, now he will he will change the delay again. You can change the delay. So I can. Uh, so he will just he is going to just change change the delay and uh, reprogram it. Now it is slow. He has changed it to one second. Hmm? So this is the real thing. Real thing, and and your students, if you are working with your lab, you will be you will be working with this one, the real thing, not with the that uh, um, 
finger card uh, simulation so what i suggest is that you um, ask the students to learn everything uh, all the coding every pr senses lcds everything on the thing that thing and finally ask them to port it to a real hardware like this so it is very easy you can just wire it up take a breadboard wire it up and do the program okay i think uh, i will uh, stop for our lunch break we'll reassemble at uh, 2